hello guys and welcome to Matt Spima. Thank you to all of those who have subscribed to my channel. I am very grateful. I have just passed the 2000 mark. This video is actually a question and answer video. Quite a lot of you have left me some questions and I am so glad I'm able to help. Well, I hope so anyway. The first question is from someone called Stephen Malrin. I'm so sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but here is the question. Why does my car release so much smoke? Well, there is so many reasons a car can smoke. First of all, I need to know the variant of your car, which engine you have, if your car is petrol or diesel, and where the smoke's coming from. And also, when does the smoke occur? For example, if you have black smoke or dark coloured smoke, your car is likely running too rich. The easiest thing you should do is just stick it on the diagnostics machine and it should hopefully give you the correct answer. <sighs> Sorry, it's so hot in here, I apologise. Oh, it's 31 degrees in Moscow. At, is it 31 degrees? Yeah, 31 degrees at the moment. Usually, it's not this hot. But anyway, white smoke on startup is normal on a cold day. If it continues when the car is warm, or if it happens on a hot day, that's not good news. It is usually the coolant getting into the combustion chamber. So it could be a cracked, a cracked block, a cracked head, or a head gasket. But there are many other things it could be, so don't panic. Blue smoke. If you get blue smoke, it usually means the car is burning oil. This could be a stuck POV valve, a leaking valve seal, or worn piston rings, or a cylinder wall. But if you ever get any smoke coming at exhaust, it's always best to go to your local mechanic if you don't know what's happening. For me, I would take it on a diagnostics machine just to find out the answer to save me wasted loads of money. Okay, next question. Next question is from Tony G. Hello, Tony G. He says, my car says that the battery is low in my key. My car is the F20 variant. Do I need to get the key coded if I change the battery? Luckily, on the F20, F21 generation, um, get the... Sorry, there's someone looking at me. It's so awkward trying to speak on camera. I'm not used to this. That's why I'm really... That's why I'm very nervous at making mistakes. So I apologise in advance. Well, the answer is pretty simple. If you change the battery, you do not need to get it recoded. Unless it's a new key. I've actually made a video in the past about how to change the battery on this key here. I'll leave a link down below in the description box. Okay, the next question. Trips Brunch says, Hi Matt, love your videos. I was hoping to get your opinion on the new BMW 1 series. Thanks. Okay, so, the F41 series. Do I like it? Yes, I do. I love the look of it. It looks nice. I'm probably the only person who thinks that. When it comes to the grill, I would prefer the grill to be separated, the kidney grill to be separated, not stuck together like that. Um, I think the grill looks better in black. Some forward focus. But anyway, the M135 grill, the chrome, the chrome bits in the middle, I don't like as much as the blacked out version, basically. The lights are nice. Um, the bonnet is a bit shorter than usual, or basically it looks a bit more compact. I do prefer the look of the older BMs with a longer bonnet because I'm a person who likes a long bonnet. Um, when it comes to the interior, the interior to me looks lovely. I love how it follows the rest of the new range with the new um, the new screen next to the driver, not just a pop-up iPad on the, on the um, dashboard. Um, to be honest, I want to see one in person, so hopefully, um, I hope my local dealer will let me film an in-depth tour on that car. Let's hope. One thing I'm not too keen about on the new F40 is it being front-wheel drive and having no option of rear-wheel drive. I'm a person who's had BMW since he was 15 years old and I really like the feel of rear-wheel drive, especially when driving on the country roads. You just have a different feel. And if you make a mistake, it's easy to, like for example, if you make a mistake and you accidentally skid, it's easy to catch the um, skid. In a front wheel drive car, your front wheels are doing the steering and the input and braking all in one, in the front two wheels. 
I hope that makes sense. Sorry, it's so hard doing this, speaking to the camera, especially when it's so hot in this car. Um, when it, oh yeah, so, <laughs> keep waffling on about nothing. And um, I really hope they do M140, but I don't know how um, a six-cylinder engine would fit in the car, if they do one. I've heard they're not going to do a six-cylinder F40 car, which is a big shame. Because obviously on a normal F20 and all the other BMWs, the engine is sat this way, in the engine bay, in the new um, the new F41 series and the front wheel drive 2 series versions, the engine is sat this way, well, that way, in the engine bay. So it's very hard to get an engine with six cylinders into the engine bay. But who knows? Oh, and one good thing is they're doing X Drive, and I'm just wondering if you can use that app. I heard there's an app that you can use that um, makes the car into real drive, like they do on the old X Drive cars. I'm just pray that the new car allows you to do that. But then again, BMW know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, they've made cars way before I was born. Um, they do questionnaires on the um, the clients, people who buy the car, and unfortunately, most one series owners and MPV owners can't even well don't know if it's front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, and I don't care to be honest. And to be honest, if I had if I drive a front wheel drive car, and if it's anything like the Mini, it should be good. And yeah, basically that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, next question. Cool, this iPad is hot as well. AFG Criminal asks, which motor oil is good for the 2012 114i 1 1.6, which has the N13 engine? When it comes to the oil I use, I do like it, but I can't recommend it because I haven't tested any other oils. The oil I use, one second, is Castrol Edge LL01 0W30 synthetic oil. I did a video a few months back changing the oil in this car. Um, it was pretty easy to do. If you want to see that video, there's a link down below. The thing is, the oil level on my car kept going up. And the reason that was, is I had a leaky injector. And I took it to the dealership to check it all over. And basically, they took the oil I just put in out. And the new spark plugs I put in, they took them out too. I shall just let you know what all they put in. I'll take a photo. One second. I'm back. So, one second. I'll just find the photo and tell you which all they put in the car. Da -da 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 -da. I will put the photo on the screen now just so you can see what I'm looking at. So the oil they put in my engine was the BMW Twin Power Turbo 5W30. There you go. So, before you put that oil in your car, just check with your local dealership. It can vary from country to country. Um, in Russia, it is usually super cold at Christmas time, or winter time, shall I say. Um, last Christmas, it was minus 27. And now, it's 31 degrees and it's boiling hot. And in this car, it must be, I don't know, um, probably, I don't know, super hot anyway. So, the tyres I use on my car are the Pirelli P1 Centellato Run Flats. Um, for me, driving around the city, they do a good job. And I have a different make of tyres for the winter. I forgot what they're called. But um, they're not Pirelli or anything like that. They're a special um, brand. I, have, I use studded tyres. Um, yeah, on the BMW forums, they tend to like using the Michelin PS4s, Pilot Sport 4s, or the Pirelli P0s. I've never actually used those tyres, but yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, the next question is from a YouTube channel called Planet Auto. Um, thank you, Planet Auto. Um, it's so, I feel so honoured to have you watching my channel. Um, if you don't know who Planet Auto are, um, I shall leave a link down below. So, what Planet Auto do is they review brand new cars, and sometimes they review their viewers' cars. They also have a few project cars going on. I shall leave a link down below so you can see for yourself what they're like. Anyway, their question is, what is your favourite BMW of all time, model as well as generation? Well, 
My favourite BMW of all time is the BMW E31 8 Series. I would be extremely happy with any engine from the 4 litre up to the big V12s, but my dream E31 would be the Alpina B12. It's just a beautiful car, perfect wheels. I would like it in bright red or bright yellow. It's just, oh, it's just perfect in every way. Back in the early to mid 1990s, my dad had a E31 850i. It was a 1992 one, just before the CI came out. And it was brilliant red with black leather seats, and it was just perfect. Even though, being a tall kid, I was squished in the back. Um, the leg room was basically that. Um, but my dad loved the car too, so he pushed himself right far forward. It's it was quite dangerous for a family car. Um, I hope to have one soon if my wife lets me. I'm sure she will. Anyway, what's my favourite generation of um, BMW? Well, it's the generation I was brought up with. 1985 till 1999 kind of era. I love the E30s, the E34s, the E32s, the E31s. All that era. Oh, and I love the E38s, which I used to own too. Okay. Thank you, Planet Auto. Tony from Eastbourne. Hello again, Tony. I guess it's the same Tony. He asks, where do you get your torque settings for your DIY videos? And do you know any websites which show you exploded diagrams of BNOUs? For example, showing all the parts. Okay, so. The website I use for all my torque settings and for assisting me sometimes um, with the DIY videos is a website called New TIS. You'll see it on the screen now. It's a very cool site. It's basically what the BMW dealers use, but it's been made public. And for car parts, which feature um, exploded diagrams showing every single part of the BMW, I use the website Real OEM. I'll leave that on the screen too. It's a, a very cool site. You can just put in your VIN, the last seven numbers of your VIN number and all the parts can easily be found and you can use those part numbers to help you find the cheapest price anywhere else. So thank you Tony once again. The next question, okay, so this is from another YouTube channel called Lloyd Vehicle Consultant. He basically makes videos on YouTube which are very funny, which review cars and um, he also can help you find a car that you like. I shall leave down his social media links down below. His question is, would you consider buying any other cars other than BMW? As it seems that you've only had two vehicles that weren't BMW. Yes, I would own other cars other than BMW, but I would always have to own that at BMW. But the car manufacturer that I really love other than BMW is Porsche. I really love their lineup, especially at the moment, and their 1980s, 1990s um, 911s. They are just lovely. I almost bought a Porsche 911 years ago. Um, it had a faulty engine, and I wanted to do it as a project, but um, I wasn't allowed to because I was still at home with my parents, basically. And my dad used to have a um, Porsche... Um, KN. It was a 2003-2004 model. I've done an in-depth tour on it on my channel and I loved driving that about. It was a 4.5S. It was it was lovely. Um, also, um, my friend has a Porsche Cayman um, Porsche Design Edition. Edition 1. And that will be on my channel soon, do an in-depth tour. I'm also supposed to be filming this guy's um, Lamborghini Gardo SE2, so I look forward to filming that too. Anyway, thank you so much Joseph for asking me a question. A guy called Casey Farrell asks, when are you going to film the in-depth tours of the Porsche Cayman S Porsche Edition 1 and the Gallardo SE? <laughs> right, I'm hoping to film the Porsche very soon as he's hoping to sell it soon. And the Gallardo, I'm not sure when that will be, but hopefully that will be soon too. Oh, another question from Casey for real. He says, which BMWs do you think may increase in value, which are cheap to buy now? Well, the BMW E36s are very cheap at the moment, but some of them are going up in price, especially the M3s. 
And the same situation is with the E46s. All the good ones are being um, destroyed and drifted and all that. And all the good ones um, are, being, are becoming more collectible. But it may take a few years before they go up in value. But the M cars go up quicker. Also the BMW E39 M5. It, um, my dad had one of those years ago. The original person paid £90,000 for it. It was an AC Snitzer edition. And it was that was lovely. And um, basically those cars got very low in the price range a few years ago. And now they are climbing up. Because they are seen as um, more reliable than the E60 V10 M5s. Which are also a lovely car. But people are too scared to buy them. Because there's so many horror stories. Um, the... Uh, the E31 8 Series. Um, I followed these cars for years, um, since I was about four years old, f five years old, sorry. Um, it's been my dream car since then, and when they first came out, they were too expensive for me, because I was a kid, and in general, people um, found them too expensive, especially with the um, economy at the time. Um, that's why they bought out the V8 model, and the 8 Series developed quite quick, like the the 6 Series and that afterwards but um, they've hit their low point and they're going up and since the new BMW 8 Series has just came out the older one is going up in value um, some of the 850 CSIs I've seen are over $100,000 maybe even pounds I'm not sure and um, the Alpina B12 is super high too so I could probably never afford one of those but who knows but I'm, I would love to get a 840 4.4 or a 850, whatever I can find. But it all depends on where I live. In Moscow, the 8 Series is already quite expensive compared to England. And in Moscow, the cars aren't that, um, they're not in that good condition compared to in Europe. It's quite a shame, really. Um, oh, and the other car I would recommend people... Um, keeping in good condition or holding on to or buying before they go up even more in value is the BMW 1M it's the one that was before the BMW M2 it's such a lovely car when they came out they were about £40,000 um, most of them are still around that at the moment um, I think I saw one for 36000 that was very high mileage but I've seen some that are a lot higher than £40,000 um, yeah last question it's from another YouTube channel called Horlix. Uh, this is a good friend of mine called um, Alex. And he has a YouTube channel um, specialising in building um, model vehicles for magazines or his own builds or painting stuff. He um, has built the DeLorean, the, you know, the Back to the Future car, and some of the um, Star Wars stuff. Um, if you want to see his channel, I'll leave a link down below. Um, his question is, what would you look out for when buying a F generation, F20, F21 generation 1 series? Aha. Uh -huh. So I won't answer that just now. I shall make a proper video for that because quite a lot of people have asked that and it will be, it will take me a while to put it all in one video, but I shall try and get it done for you. So if you want to see that video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. It may take a while to make because it's trying to get various images that aren't copyrighted and all that kind of stuff into one video it's editing videos for me is quite difficult because uh, being in Russia I don't have um, many contacts at all to like go and film their car or take photos and that um, but anyway um, let's see what the future brings and once again a big thank you so much for helping me and my channel grow I have a question for you as um, I really need to know. So which video made you subscribe to my channel? I'm guessing quite a lot of the viewers are F20 generation 1 series owners as my channel seemed to expand while making F21, F20 videos. Um, if it was another video, for example the in-depth tours like the Porsche and the X5 and the X6 or the Ladas, please let me know too. Um, 
Also, please let me know what you think of this video. I apologise for speaking so fast. Um, I'm quite nervous about speaking on the camera. Look at you guys. Anyway, thank you so much and let me know. Thank you. Take care. Bye.